What's going on everybody? It's your boy Caesar with Caesar Gets Crypto. We are looking at Bitcoin today. Surprise, surprise. I made this video a little later um, for personal reasons. So I had to make it later in the day. Um, let's just see here. Okay, so looks like we're having a green day so far. It is the uh, first of the month still. Technically we are on the second day of the month for the Bitcoin candle, the daily candle. It is on the second day of the month right now. Um, I have this big thing in there for no reason. Um, it's from, from my last video. Um, the way that Bitcoin is bouncing right now, to be completely fair, you know, there's no volume, no volume at all. But look, like if we look at it right, look at how little this volume is and look at how very comparable it is to the, the day that it had before, right? A lot more volume, a lot more volume, right? Like talking three times, four times as much volume um, and about, you know, just, just a little bit bigger candle bodies. I would not be surprised. I would very much not be surprised. I know, you know, there's 18, there's basically 19 hours left in this day. I would not be surprised if this candle closed red. If it did not close red, what would happen is we would need to see more volume and if more volume came through at this price right now, we would probably go up. We would go up to about, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe these previous areas over here of uh, resistance, 27.5. We could, we could, we're at 27.1 right now. It's going up as I'm talking. We could go to 27.5. Um, and you know, that, that wouldn't really match the narrative that I've painted especially if we close at 27.5. Maybe we went up there and then came back down and kind of had a neutral looking candle. That could be it. Um, but if we closed at, you know, really above like 27.2 or 27.3, this would cross back above the 50. And that would go against my 14% uh, four, minimum price drop that I'm calling for, which would take us down to, let's see, I forget where, take us down to about 24.5. Um, because, you know, we broke up above the 50 here, broke down below it again after being above the 50 for less than a week, um, a very short amount of time. The last 12 iterations that we've done this, um, two of those iterations were like, one of them was like a 38% drop and the other one was a 43% drop. So I took those two out, out of 12 iterations. So out of 10 iterations, excluding the, the two outliers, um, we got a 14, a basically around a 14% drop on average. Um, and this, you know, being at less than half that, about half that, I, I would be surprised if this was the bottom here, especially, you know, we take into consideration that on the, uh, on the ribbon, we are, you know, we just went above it and came back below it. The ribbon is starting to expand down. I, I would be very surprised um, if today, closed above this yellow line or if we if we got up to 7500 I, I wouldn't be too surprised if we got up to 7500 I would be surprised if we broke through it if this was a, uh, a bottom because that would go against everything I've been saying about this being a fake move but let's let's take a look at it let's take you know it didn't really balance at an area that's too conventional let's look at the four hour and just see I don't know man it's testing the ribbon as it's like crossing this is very usual stuff actually I'm, I'm a little bit less worried now i wasn't really too worried to begin with but this this looks like it's going to reject man i'm i'm actually i'm pretty confident that today is going to close red um unless unless we break through that four hour unless this four hour ribbon can break through to the upside and then this is just a false cross um i don't think so though man i think the way this looks so far you know there's still three hours left in this candle i'm going to go to bed soon so i won't be able to see it but i'm, I'm pretty confident that uh that yeah that, that this is just a green move and then we're gonna wake up. Maybe it's green tomorrow, but we have a, a, sh a weak close or a, or a strong bearish close. Um, the way that it's interacting with this purple line, the purple line's losing its mustard. We're coming, we're kind of hunching over on the, f let's see, on the long-term RSI. We are pretty close to the 50. We're at an area, you know, crossing below this 50 too. We're, we're really at an area, we've been at an area for a while now where Bitcoin just needs to make a decision, man. Um, and right now it does look more bearish than it does bullish, but if it was to go $1,000 in any direction, which isn't much on a $27,000 asset, if it was to just move $1,000 in any direction from here, 
that would be very convincing to, to either side, I think. And I think I think that's why we're seeing so much sideways action. People are people are very undecisive right now, and I think a lot of people are bullish, um, and that catches people off guard. But I do think the predominant the dominating trend is bearish, and that might you know that we have so many bullish people even amidst the bearishness that maybe it's price is just being kept up by by all this hopium. Once that goes away, though, once all these bulls are put in their kennels, the bears will will ro roam, will roam free. This is Caesar the bear. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, or I mean, it, not not that it wouldn't surprise me. It would be nice if we did close around here or a little bit higher for the day, and we didn't close red. It would it would actually be nice to get a rejection off of this fifty. That could be the only thing that's more bearish than just closing this day red and shooting right through. If we if we close the day around here and then tomorrow, you know, maybe we had a pop up, maybe we just straight rejection rejected. But if we had a rejection off of this fifty, which closing here would be enough in my opinion to call that a rejection. Um, but any higher would just be better. Um, that would that would look very bearish and very very good for my cause, my case that I'm trying to build here. I don't know if we'll get it though, man, because looking at that four hour, I'm pretty convinced that we are going to close red today. Um, let's see. Yeah, man, we're below the fifty. We just got below the fifty. Um, price is above the purple line, and the purple line isn't. It is kind of posture to the upside, but it's really just been kind of like moving sideways. It's like a, it's a limp noodle, so. To me, I would say that this is a selling point. This would be a good time to go short, actually. And damn, man, in three hours, or even even if it's not three hours, even if it closes around here, or like even even if this closes red, this is still kind of like a rejection off of the 50, um, but on the four hour, which would definitely not be good and definitely make the uh, the daily look bearish for sure. Um, on the one hour, yeah, man, it just looks worse as you zoom in. You've got a high here that's a higher high than this, right? Higher high. But you've got high here, lower high. This is hidden bearish divergence. It's not confirmed yet. It is still forming. So there is a chance that this could be invalidated if we just continue to go. Mainly if we get a close above this and we continue to go higher. Um, but as of right now, I'm not, I'm not too excited or worried. Let's see. Yeah, man. Wow. You've got high, lower high, lower high. And yet you have high, higher, high, higher, high. This just looks like it's winding up and ready to slam down. Um, really does not look good. On the 15 minute, you're oversold or you're overbought already. You tipped it. You kind of tipped it before here. And this was this is exactly what happened before we shit the bed last time. Um, you know, similar things over here. And then down. I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe we do get a little pump up, a little last like pump up or hurrah. I wouldn't. Ex I, I'm expecting this day to close red though, um, which isn't too preposterous. You know, it opened at twenty six eight. Here we are, like less than two hundred dollars above that, or about. I guess technically more than two hundred dollars. About two hundred and fifty dollars above that for Bitcoin to move there in the next nineteen hours, give or take. Um, that that's not too out of the question. It'd be really crazy. It would be really crazy, man, if today um, closed below this line here. If it closed, if it closed below there, um, that would be nuts. Which is what that's like around twenty six five, twenty six three. Yeah, if it closes below twenty six three, it's on. Really, if it closes below this purple line, it's on. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm bearish on Bitcoin. I don't like the way it looks right now. If I wake up and it's like three or four hundred dollars higher i'll change my mind um but oh yeah i was gonna look at the fibs i was gonna look at the fibs let's look at the one hour get it going let's get it going so from the bottom that wasn't the bottom to the top bottom nope come on now i don't know why you want to do that bottom to top yeah eh, i don't like it I don't like it. I really don't like it. Yeah, you know, like we, we came down here, found resistance on the 236, had a little fake pump, confirmed resistance here, went lower. We came down here, found resistance on the 0.5, had a little fake pump, and went lower to the 0.69. Very sensual. 
came back up above the 618. We're not really respecting the 618 at all, which is not a good thing if you're bullish because we're going to the downside. Holding the 0.5 as resistance, which coming back up and finding it as resistance, like finding it, if we came down and found it as support, that would be a lot more significant of a price move to expect than coming back up and testing it as resistance, okay? If if this was a drawn upside down fib and we were finding resistance on, on the... <clears throat> 0.5 that way, then it'd be more significant. I don't know how to describe what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about. I hope you do. But what I'm trying to say is the 0.5 is normally a significant level or an insignificant level. But whenever you find significance on it, you get significant moves. Unless we're in this kind of circumstance right now, which is where it's stair stepping down. It blew through the 0.5 and it's just showing resistance on it now, you know, once, twice. I don't expect significant moves to happen off of this. But I am actually, I, I do think that we're in the we're we're about to see a pretty significant move. With that being said, because um, we disrespected the six one eight here, we we straight disrespected it to the downside. I guess we found support on it right there. To be fair, we did. May, you know, maybe a little bit of respect, but this this is not respect. This is disrespect right here. And we are respecting the point five. Generally, looking at something like this would make me think that we're going to see extensions, which the first extension would be at twenty five thousand two hundred. And the other one to be expected would be about 24,400, the 1618, with the potential low of the 1886 being in at around 24,000, or even the, the 2272, 2618 maybe, but I think we're getting a little bit, as we get down here, we're getting a little, uh, a little less likely, I would say. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. This is a pretty small um, time zone. So right now, what I, what I would say is let's just keep an eye on these prices. If and when Bitcoin gets below twenty six thousand eight hundred and forty dollars, twenty six thousand eight hundred and thirty, whatever. Um, if and when that happens, I'm looking down here automatically. I'm looking. I'm looking here. I'm looking here, and I'm looking here, and pessimistically down here as well. That's that's possible as well. Um, but I do like this fib. I do think that. It is being respected to some degree, just not on the 618 really too much and not, not on every line, but it definitely respected the 236. It definitely respects the 0.5. It, it bounced off the 0.69, which is a pretty common area once you go through the 618. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it disrespected the 786 and the 886. And it, it, it was literally just like a straight drop. Like all this pitter pattering that we're doing here, like all this like up and down sideways stuff. I think once we break the 618 with conviction, I don't think we're going to see that at least until we get down to the 1272 or 1618 area. Um, so bearish. I am bearish. Surprise, surprise on Bitcoin. Let's look and see just where we're at. I wonder. You know, this is an older fib. I'm sorry I keep yawning, guys. It's late where I'm at. I'm about to go to bed. Um, oof. Wow. Wow. Yep, it's over, man. It's over. It's over. Yep, I forgot about this one. Wow. Okay, so looking at this, right, from bottom to top, you've got your extensions and stuff down here. Bitcoin, you know, it came down, found support on the 618, classic, came back up, resisted the 0 0.069. We broke through the 618 very convincingly, tested it back as resistance, and then straight from there, literally straight from there, it was down to the 1272 and the 1414. We came back up to the 786, got resistance, held down by the 886, found support at the 1414 again. This was the bull's last hope. We found 14, we got a double bottom, 1414 support. You couldn't break the 618. You couldn't. And this is a much more, in my opinion, a much more set in stone form of resistance than this was, this little wick was. Um, and you went to the 0.5 afterwards. Like, man, um, I, I really do think it's at least going to this blue line in the short term. It could be, it could be today. It could be by the end of today in 19 hours, um, maybe within the next week, but but I would expect this blue line, if not honestly, lower. Like, cause once once we're here, it wouldn't surprise me. Let's just see where this stuff is, man. I, 
you know this these are different extensions to really draw off of i don't like to go and and these extensions could play off um just fine like you know these lines could be respected down here i don't like to really go off of that too much unless i see that in previous price action what i'd really like to do at this point would be to measure from bottom to top yeah yep the 382 that's where you're going, man. Where, where, what, what kind of fib is that from here? Bottom to top. Right there at the 2272. Yep. Yep. And it doesn't surprise me rejecting the 618 right there. That's, I, I would fully believe that we're going to make a move below 24K very soon. Coming in hot um, in, in the next week or two. It's, it's happening. Um, probably less than two weeks, actually, at this point. We're already almost done with this week, so probably less than two weeks. A um, week and a half. Um, let's take this fib one more time. Last one. We'll wrap it up here. 618, right there at the 382, man. And if we draw another fib, we're going to make it noisy for sure, but just stay with me. The 2272, that's this red line, which is right above the 618, which is right below the 382. All these... Very significant fibs that Bitcoin seems to be following on, on a bunch of different time frames and a bunch of different fib levels. Um, and they're all lining up right around prices that are between 23.5 and 24,000. I really would not be surprised if that happened in the next week, week and a half. I don't think it's going to happen over the weekend. If, if by tomorrow's close, we haven't gone there already, it's not that it can't happen, but I would think it would at least be put on pause until Monday. So if by tomorrow's close, we don't get that kind of price action, um, I would expect maybe a bullish weekend, maybe a, a somewhat sideways weekend, whatever. Um, but we'll see. Today and tomorrow. I guess today's Friday on, on, uh, on this chart. Yeah, it's Friday. So really by today's close. Today's close. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll make a video tomorrow just to you know, kind of keep things updated with this kind of train of thought in mind. We are seeing some lacklusterness in this MA coming down and testing it, not finding significant support. You know, we broke through it, significant move. We found support on it, significant move. We were near it, eh. We bounced off it, eh. Fake, fake bull trap, you know what I mean? No volume, no volume to follow through. And the volume, if we're looking at it on the one hour, um, actually this isn't the right chart to base volume off of, in my opinion. Coinbase will do. Um, you know, I guess it's not really too much. It looks like, it does look to me like volume is picking up as we're going down, but it kind of petered out down here, so maybe that's why we're having a pop, because nobody's selling right now. I don't know. I mean, there's more volume. There's definitely more volume on this side coming down than there was on this side coming up. Yes, this had a higher peak, but there were more peaks over here. There's only like four here. There's like eight over here, so... Definitely more volume on the way down. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. I would say I would say I'm pretty short term bearish. I wouldn't think that any kind of pump that happens today will be long lived. We are on a new month and generally, you know, like if you look at it, we look at it and we see all these wicks that happen on a monthly time basis, you know, like did this wick happen? Did Bitcoin go from here all the way down and then at the end of the month it went up and then back down no you know in the in the actually that, that's a bad example i'm sorry uh the, for the red candle did it go you know did it go down here first no it probably very much went up here first and then went down a lot of these red candles you'll get a wick to the upside a lot of the green candles you have a wick to the downside so in a sense if you're thinking about it you want to get your wick out of the way early so it makes sense if it's going to be a red month um, it makes sense to pump and if it's going to be a green month you want to get your wick out early on the downside um, It's not always you know like look at this no wick at all here very limited very like no wick at all there um, Small wick there, but there are pretty noticeable wicks on almost all of them So if I'm expecting June to be bearish, which I am we're in the first week of June it, it wouldn't surprise me um, if it was a bullish week or or if we had some bullish price action on, on the first few days. Um, but bullish, bullish to a very small degree. Like it's not even, I don't even feel like it's appropriate to call it bullish. Because um, there's just no volume. There's no follow through at all, man. There's none. And it doesn't surprise me that here we are 
almost the size of this candle here and there's no volume backing it up at all. None, zero, like, wow. Wow, wow, I wonder, I really do, let's see. Yep. <laughs> let's, let's keep on zooming it down, let's really look at it, let's see here. Yeah, man. So, all the volume that like came in for this pump up here, <laughs> this is where it was, this is where it started, right? Look at how there's no volume at all to that side of the line. And in fact, I bet if we go to every little spike on that side of the line, I bet it's on a red candle. Let's do it, let's do it. And in fact, this one here, this big spike was on this big red candle. This big spike in volume was on this red candle um, that are basically all red. Someone's offloading. They're offloading and then the books get cleared and they're, they're using their algorithms to pump it up slowly but surely methodically. And then once it gets up to their, their lower prices, whatever, where there's so, more selling pressure, they're unloading their bags hard. Um, you know, a little spike here, that was green. Okay, so this, you know, it's a little spikes right here, right? This, these little spikes were red, but these little spikes were green. I guess the second one was red. Um, almost as big as this one, but it was a lot smaller. Like it's, and then we move sideways methodically, methodically, right? They probably stopped selling their bags, let it pump a little bit. That was a big one on a green. Not, not, it's not big by any means. We're looking at the five minute chart, but this big one right here, damn. <laughs> that one happened on a green one too. So that, that disproves what I was just thinking. But, but not, nonetheless, if you look from here and over, the volume that's happened afterwards is definitely a lot lower than the volume that happened beforehand. Ergo, the volume taking us up is not there. The volume taking us down is there. So to me, that just says this is a fake move going up. Anyways, this has been a overly long video. I didn't mean for it to be this long on Bitcoin. I think you guys all get the picture. The main things that I'm looking for right now is I do want to see Bitcoin stay below this 50 if I'm looking for it to go lower. If I'm looking for it to go higher, which I'm not, but some of you might be, you would really want the RSI to get above the 50. Um, a bullish engulfing candle wouldn't hurt. Prices above 7,500 would not hurt. You want to get above this ribbon, right? The MA ribbon on the daily. You really do. That way on the weekly, you can continue being up here and hopefully get a bullish cross. That'd be nice. If you're bearish, you want to come below this, which is at the yellow line. You want to come below 26, basically 25,900. $25,900, which just doing the analysis I did earlier, we were very likely to go below that price in the coming like days. Um, but maybe not, I could be wrong. So if you're a bull, you want to hold this yellow line, you want to hold 25,900 at least this week. Um, you know, every week that you say above this is a, is a win because you're getting closer to this bullish cross. You want that cross. If you're a bear, you want price to get below the yellow line and especially below the ribbon. If you're on the daily time frame, if you're a bear, hold this as basically flip it. You know, you want to get above this if you're a bull and hold this as resistance if you're a bear, um, which I think it, it looks like it wants to do. And then on the four hour, I mean, this could, I mean, it could be a fake cross down and that would get a very serious bullish move up, up like, potentially even higher than this here. But I don't see it happening, man. To me, it looks like it wants to resist. It looks like resistance. We got a fresh cross to the downside. It literally went to the top of this ribbon, which is very common. It's very common to go right where the ribbon is when it's contracting, especially during a cross. It's very common to do that. Um, so I'm not, I'm really not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, those are my, those are my little footnotes, my little to go notes. If your bull you would like to get above 27.5. If you're a bear, you'd like to get below 26,000, basically. It's a little bit less of a gap for the bulls and it's a little bit more of a gap for the bears, but this is Bitcoin, man. A $1,000 move in either direction could really set the standard for what's going on. Before I go, why not? Let's look at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Um, you can pull this up yourself, type in Crypto Fear and Greed Index. It is alternative.me. You click on it, and here it is. Neutral. It's been neutral, man. Neutral yesterday, neutral last week, greedy last month. You know, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. If we go to the max, let's just see. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can do the one year. We have been in a steady uptrend. 
since the beginning of, or since June of last year, we've been in an uptrend, which is crazy. Because really, in Bitcoin since June of last year, I guess we've been in an uptrend. Yeah, we have. We have. So, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Anyways, nothing nothing too spectacular off of this. Nothing too spectacular at all. Anywho, guys, let's see if I got anything on uh, on the Twitter feeds here. Um, let's see. I said today or tomorrow's candle will be the mildest candles we've seen on a closing basis since March. I said mildest, but I meant biggest. So if today's candle, if Friday's candle um, doesn't... And this, this was made last night. It says May 31st, but it was made late last night. So it was definitely on... Um, June 1st's candle, but if June 1st or June 2nd doesn't have the biggest close, which at this point, the biggest close in, you know, since March would be a close on a daily basis of, uh, like we would need a 6% candle basically, because this was the biggest one since March, 5.2. And then other than that, right here, March 17th, that was nine. The biggest one we've seen since then was right here, 5.2. So I'm expecting that this candle by by my twitter post that this should be on a and i said on a closing basis so not including the wick just the just the closing basis i would expect today to close wow around twenty five thousand. we'll see we'll see if that's true if not i'm wrong on twitter but that's okay timing these things out man you can you can guess the price all you want but but timing is is the hardest thing to guess they always say that you know you'll always be right about the price and you'll you'll never be right about the timing so you know i try to stay away from time predictions but sometimes i'm feeling myself i like to throw it out there um and now i'm just talking so with all that being said leave a like subscribe if you want to see more stuff um thank you all i really appreciate the new subscribers i appreciate every comment i get i appreciate all the likes that i get um, I say all the likes, I get like three or four likes a video, but man, it does, it makes a big difference, especially when I'm one of those likes, right? Um, my mom is the other one. I don't know if, I don't, hi mom, I don't know if you're watching, or my grandma or my grandparents. You know, I got people in my family and my friend groups who watch this stuff too, and anybody that leaves a like, it's very much appreciated. Um, it just gets, it gets my content out there to more people. It makes it, you know, the algorithm pushes it more. And comments help, but subscribers, I definitely like subscribers man um, I'm getting more subscribers on Twitter or more followers actually is the term right I have 59 followers on Twitter I had like 39 or 34 followers um, at the beginning of the year so doubling that almost which is kind of cool and on TikTok I have about the same followers as I do on YouTube when I had the least amount of followers on my TikTok and now I have basically the same as I do on YouTube so just if you guys want to follow me on TikTok or on, or on Twitter I'm at Chris Harris 85 BT Chris that's me um, if you want to follow me on TikTok, it's at Chris Harris 45, same thing, just with the four five instead of an 85. And, uh, yeah, really appreciate all the support and all the, all the, all the time you guys are putting into me with this. I, I really appreciate it. Um, before you go, Greg here wants to know which glass gets filled to the top first, which glass gets filled to the top. And I answered, I answered at first. My brain went to here to seven, right? Because it goes, you know, it's at this will this will fill first, and then this will fill seven. But there's a line here. There's no line here it can fill, so there's a line there. So no, not seven. Okay. Well, it can't fill six because there's a line there too. So really, it's gonna fill three, come back up, and then fill one. So you're gonna come over here. Can't fill five, so it has to fill four, right? So four might be the logical answer, but that's not true. That's not true because it has to fill three before it fills four. It has to fill three so that it comes back and fills one all the way up. So three is the right answer. Some people would say six or seven is the right answer because even with these lines here, if it overflows, it'll fill these up first, you know? But no, it would have to fill up three before it fills up any of these. So that's your answer, three. <laughs> I asked you, I asked you what it was, and I, I just kind of ruined the fun for you. But it is three. It is three. And if even if that's not the right answer, that, that should be the right answer. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're still here, if you're still here, let's see. I don't know, man. I'm bearish. I'm definitely bearish on this chart. 
Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. And when this proves to be a rejection, man, to, yeah, this day, this day could be the day. This could be the beginning of it. But for it to be on a Friday, I mean, that's not, that's not too out of the question, you know, like, let's see. When was this guy? That was on a Monday. This guy was on a Wednesday. Friday had a pretty big candle there. I mean, in comparison, you know, it's not really, these aren't, any of these are not big candles, by the way. We forgot what a big candle is, man. It's been since March since we've had a, a big candle. Um, wasn't even double digits. It was just 9%. Um, with this daily cross, man, and the contraction afterwards, the little fake out afterwards, I can't help, this This just feels all too similar. And, and let's tie it all together, right? Let's tie it all together. You had your cross, you had your pump out of the ribbon, right? And then crash back down below the ribbon. And this is, if things are going the way I think they are, this is happening at the beginning of the next downtrend, right? We just had our uptrend, so this is at the beginning. We're in the midst of the start of a downtrend. Here is our cross. Here's our last uh, daily bearish cross right here. And we were in a little uptrend, right? And we had a little fake pump above the ribbon right in the beginning of this next downtrend, right in the beginning, right? This downtrend happened and it started, it kept going all the way down to here. Um, and this, by the way, from top to bottom, I've been saying it, it's a 59% drop in the immediate, in the immediate low, it went to 41%. And I've already measured it so many times, I know that that is three weeks time, 21 days on the dot from top to bottom 21 days if we're doing the same thing here top to bottom 21 days that puts us at middle of June late half of June and if we were to drop what was that what was that percentage no not that one 41% from the high 41% would put us pretty low, man, pretty low. And that would happen this month. And I am, I am expecting it. I am expecting June to be this bearish. I'm, I'm serious, man. If you've, if you're, if you're still here to hear this, I'll just keep saying it over my videos. You know, I am, I am dedicated to bring my, my perspective to anyone who wants to hear it. Um, June is going to be a bad month. It's going to be a very bad month. In a good way, if you're bearish, in a bad way, if you're bullish. But it's price is going down. It's going to go down a lot, man. A lot. And 41%, maybe it doesn't do that. Maybe it doesn't do 41%. Maybe it does half of that. Maybe it does 20 and a half percent. Which, by the way, would still put it down below $23,000. Okay? So, either way... It's, it's a bad month. That's the worst month that, that Bitcoin would have had in... I'm not even on log. Um, I mean, really, since in, in a year. It would have been the worst month we've had since last June. Um, and I think we're overdue for it, man. I really do think we're overdue for it. This will be crazy, man. This will be really crazy because on the monthly time frame... You've got this yellow line cross below. We've never had that. We've just, we've never, I've showed this before. I'm going to make another video tomorrow showing it. I'll, you know, I'll do it more in the beginning because I'm sure I'm just talking to myself here. But if you look, the yellow line has never on the monthly time frame ever, it's never gone below any other line. It's gotten close. It's gotten close. It's gotten so close but never gone below it, never even touched it. It got close, but it never even did. Never, never, never. All the way up, all the way up. And it makes sense, Bitcoin's in a very bullish uh, macro uptrend, it, it has been. But here we are, yellow line is below one of those lines. It looks like it wants to go below the second line. And in that whole history that I just showed you, never, ever, freaking ever, man, have we had candles that closed below and opened 
on a monthly basis, let alone several, and never ever has it gone from being below, because it has gone below, right? We've gone below on a wick, we've gone below on a close, we've opened below it, but we've never opened and closed it below is what I'm saying, right? These We've got candles that open and close below. Um, we're like this one opened below, but it didn't close below. This one opened into it, but closed below. We've gone below it before. We have gone below it with wicks and bodies even. We've gone below it, but we always come back up. And when we come back up, we don't close below it again. We don't have, you know, like it doesn't, it just doesn't happen. When we've, when we've gone back up above it, we don't, we really don't come back down into it too much. Below it, came back up, tested it as support. Below it, came back up, tested it as support. Below it, came back up, tested it as support. We had the COVID crash with this big wick, but we still closed in the ribbon. If, if we close, I mean, shit, man, wow. We went back up and we closed below the ribbon. We're below the yellow line right now. This is not good. This is not good stuff. You don't, this is a bull, a bearish engulfing candle on the monthly. Man, I am making my video tomorrow about this stuff. So if you've seen this, just don't even watch my video in the morning tomorrow because I'm going to go over this specifically tomorrow. Um, yeah. Anyways, rantings of a madman over. I'm going to go to bed. Um, have a good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. Leave a like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm bearish. I'm definitely bearish. Unless Bitcoin does something, a thousand dollar move up would change my mind. Which, if I woke up tomorrow and we were at twenty eight thousand one hundred, I would change my mind. With some volume, I would change my mind. Um, I'd really like the day to close before I change my mind. Let's let's leave it at that. If the day can close above twenty eight thousand, um, I would change my mind. But I just don't see that happening. I really don't see that happening. This looks bad, man. All right, take care. Caesar out.